Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know I took an exquisite X5, a 50-foot catamaran, and sailed it from Cape Town, South Africa, across the equator, all the way to the Caribbean. It was an amazing adventure. In this episode, you're going to see us sailing away from that beautiful Brazilian island called Fernando de Noronha that you saw in the last episode on our way towards Grenada. But in the meantime, we have a lot of things that happen, such as getting so close to the Brazilian coastline that we start to run into some serious fishing and freighter traffic, which we haven't had to do while we're in the middle of the Atlantic. We cross the equator for the first time, which is obviously a momentous occasion for any sailor. I am now officially a shellback. And we finally land a fish that's worth bringing on board. And I'm telling you, it was one hell of a struggle. It ended up being a 36 pound mahi mahi. So you're not gonna wanna miss this episode. Definitely stay tuned. Before we go any further, I just want to give a special shout out to the patrons that support the channel, many of whom have been supporting this channel since long before I was doing these transatlantic sailing voyages. And then in this particular voyage, I had these sponsors jump on board to help defer the cost of me flying halfway around the world, only to get on a catamaran and sail almost halfway around the world, all while I had to leave my regular paying job. Thanks so much. I couldn't have done it without you. And hopefully you enjoy this episode. We anchor and hoist the sail. So Steve's leaving for the last time. Bye. Adios, senor. Stay in touch. They're gonna fill up some diesel. Sean's gonna come back with a six more diesel jerry cans full. So, Valentin, who's our delivery captain, he came on board, we had two full 100 gallon tanks, one on each side, so that's 200 gallons, plus we had three jerry cans of diesel uh, that we previously filled up. Uh, we had nine at one point, but we took the jerry cans, put them in the uh, in the actual boat's fuel tank. And then when Valentin came, said, well, why would we leave with six empty jerry cans? Let's just fill them all just on the off chance. Like I said, uh, he's done this passage from Cape Town to the Caribbean 30 times, mostly doing that, delivering leopard catamarans. And he said there's been many a time that they've had to go through the doldrums near the equator, and it's been seven days of motoring. There's just li literally almost no wind. So he's saying with us having massive engines compared to a leopard, there's 80 horsepower on each side. He's worried that we will go through fuel faster than he was originally thinking. And he thought 218 gallons is what we had with the fuel uh, on board. Uh, he said might be uh, touch and go at the end if we have enough fuel. So he said fill those extra six and we should be a plenty of fuel. So I agree with that because we don't want to be motoring and worrying every day that our fuel tanks are getting lower and lower and lower. And uh, yeah, I'm on a time crunch. I got to get to Grenada to get home to my regular life and to see Janice, which I miss dearly. So I'm more than happy that we're getting more fuel. And with that, we left the beautiful Fernando de Norona Island. It was something to see, definitely a lot of dolphins and aquatic wildlife all around. So definitely something I would suggest going to, but maybe only for a couple of days because it is quite expensive. We quickly got back into our sailing routine. We got that parasailer up as soon as we possibly could because we love that sail. We showed our new crew member, Valentin, around the boat, got him used to everything, showed him the ropes, so to speak, even though he's a very, very, very experienced sailor. But every boat's different and he wanted to learn every nook and cranny of the boat and that's great. Right out of the gates, we were having beautiful weather with plenty of wind for sailing. Now we knew we would take advantage of that while we could because as we get closer to the equator, we hit that doldrums where there shouldn't be any wind at all. So we're kind of wondering how long that's gonna be, how wide that's gonna be, how many days we're gonna to have to motor. But for now, we're sailing in some beautiful conditions. Good morning, it is July 4th, and I think this is our third day of sailing since leaving uh, Fernando de Norona, the Brazilian island. And I just wanted to show you a little bit of our setup here. So I'm filming in here at the inner helm, which is mirrored to the outer helm, uh, just so I'm away from the guy that's trying to sleep. Valentin, when we first left Cape Town, it was Tomas sleeping out there, and then as we moved on, it became Steve when Tomas left, was sleeping out there. And now the newest crew member, our delivery captain, Valentin, is out there. So. 
Unbeknownst to me when I started the series, you can't sit at the outside helm and talk on a camera because you'll wake up the person who's literally three feet behind you. So I'm in here and let me just show you the uh, the mirrored helm. So this is the, our chart plotter that we have out there, but we also have in here. And I just wanted to show you a couple of things that are kind of interesting. So go here, click this, get this grid to the full screen. Now this is our track. You can see there's been some marks put along the way. Let me zoom out, give you a lay of the land of where we are. Okay, so we started back here in Cape Town. We went up here to Namibia, went across here to St. Helena. We went over here to Fernando de Nerona, and now we're continuing. This pink line is our expected most direct path to get to uh, Grenada. So this is our normal setup that we have. So we have the radar, which you can see any ships that don't have AIS. If there was a boat with an AIS transponder, they would show up not only here, but here. Let me zoom in this one a bit more. So you can see our path a little closer to the shore of Brazil. So uh, we've marked some shallow spots. None of these are islands per se, but they're just shallow areas. I don't know, somebody's marked a few of them just to make us aware that they're there. Um, this obviously has nothing showing right now. There's no boats, no storms. If there were storms, you'd see like a, a blob like this, but down here or up here, wherever the storm was, you'd see it. And of course, any ships or AIS that would show up would show up on both. So we have nothing that I have to look out for now. Some of the other things, this is our odometer since leaving, I think, Namibia. So we've got more than that number of miles done, but that's that. This is the apparent wind speed in knots. This is our GPS speed in knots. Uh, this is the bearing that we're heading on, and this is the bearing to our uh, endpoint in Grenada. So yeah, so right now we're sailing pretty much dead downwind, as you can see from this thing almost straight downwind. I think we're on a wind angle of 178 degrees and that's to keep us as close to on our line as possible as the wind swings around. Hopefully it goes a little more east because we're on a starboard tack. If it goes any more south, we're actually gonna have to jive or go off course a bit. Uh, probably we just go off course a bit because it's not forecasted to come from the south. Uh, this is about as far south. Those are the wind angles right there. This is about as far south as we've had lately. So if it goes more back easterly, then we'll be uh, able to uh, not be at 178 degrees of the wind. We can go up to about 140 if need be. So that's pretty much it. So there you go. This is what it's like to be on watch. You can sit out there, which is a little more cool, a little more wind, but then you're exposed to the sun. Or you can be down here and everything's controllable from down here as well. And it's, you know, in colder climates when we first started like Cape Town and Namibia even, it was freezing, so I spent most of my time at my watch in here, looking through this easy to, you know, 360 degree view through all the windows, and uh, that was more comfortable. Some people preferred to bundle up and sit out there. It's just a personal choice. As long as you can see all around, make sure there's no lights or shipping, um, yeah, you're safe doing either. Okay, on a side note, why you do need to come in here into the inner helm at least once an hour, even if you are the type of person that wants to sit out there, is you have to fill out the logbook. There's our logbook, and it's been going on since <laughs> since we left. Every hour, whoever's been on watch has had to write, uh, you know, of course the hour that we're talking about, the trip odometer, the angle steered, the speed we've been going approximately, the speed, the wind uh, and angle, whether it's clear or foggy or whatever, how many nautical miles we've done in the last hour, and then our GPS location, and then anything we want to write that might have been interesting if something happened during that hour. So, gotta do that every hour. And since you have to write in a book, we aren't going to leave the book out in the exposed helm, so it's in here, so once an hour you definitely have to sit in the inner helm, and luckily, of course, everything that's seen up there about your wind speeds and everything can be seen from here on the uh, on the mirrored iPad. Sean's using his bread maker again. Seems to be our uh, regular routine. We can't seem to keep bread that we buy in the store from going moldy, right? So Three days. Three days is about all we get in this heat. So this is what it looks like. It's done. We're almost done this last loaf, so that's why it's kicking into a new one. It is very, very tasty. I would highly suggest getting a bread maker if you're going to live on a boat. Bread is hard to find, and it doesn't stay for very long. Okay, here I am just sitting out on the bow of the boat. It's beautiful this time of night. The sun is just about setting, going below a cloud. I'll show you in a second. We're about one, less than one and a half degrees from the equator, so of course it's warm. Even overnight, when you're on my overnight uh, watch, you can sit outside in shorts and t-shirt. It's never chilly. Uh, oh, the sun's peeking out below the clouds now. Just love this time of the day. Let me turn it around for you. This is just par for the course. You get all sorts of different sunsets. Sometimes it's crystal clear and you get to see it right to the 
horizon. Other times there's cloud cover like this, but it still makes for a pretty beautiful sight. When I was on the previous passage, the sun would rise during my shift, but now uh, we've changed the clock on the boat and uh, sunrise is actually on uh, Neil's ship before me. He's a three to six guy. So when I get up, it's already a couple inches, you know, like when you do this, a couple inches above the horizon. So I miss the sunrise now, but uh, we all get the sunset. Pretty much we're always awake now because we all have dinner together. And that's just a beautiful sight. Good morning and welcome to day four or five. I've lost track. So of course, as you know, this is my morning watch. I'm up alone. As you can see, we're now getting very close to the Brazilian coastline. And this mouth here is the Amazon River. So I've been told that when we get close here, the water's gonna go from this crystal clear blue color that you get here to uh, muddy brown. <laughs> so we'll look forward to seeing that and I'll show you that on camera. And then of course, after we get past that, we're really close to the Brazilian coast. We keep going past Suriname, Guiana, and then Venezuela on our way past Trinidad to eventually Grenada, which is over here. And that's the final spot where I will be getting off. It is 8.19 in the morning. I tend to do these vlogs inside at the nav station when I want to talk about something on the map or out here on the bow of the boat with the more cinematic camera. Um, early in the morning, A, nobody else is up to listen to me. <laughs> so I don't feel self-conscious talking to a camera. And B, uh, it's the only time it's not unbearably hot. It is hot right now in the sun. I'm gonna do a pan around, give you that uh, ambient real life sounds of sailing and show you the beauty. It is stunningly beautiful, but you do not want to do this in the middle of the day. It, it was so hot. Now we are a little over one degree from the equator. And I know if you, if I posted the uh, vlog from yesterday, I said I was a little over one degree south of the equator and you're thinking that you haven't moved much. It's because we kind of changed our path from being sort of out in the Atlantic and we went more west to get towards the coast of uh, Brazil. Reason being, our weather router said we might actually be able to sail through the doldrums if we get closer to the Brazilian coast. So we've gone more west than north and therefore haven't really gotten that much closer to the equator. But uh, it's coming and you can definitely feel it. Whew. All right, let me turn it around and let you see the real sights and sounds of sailing in the Atlantic near the equator and also near the coast of Brazil. Check it out. And just a beautiful day with very few clouds. beautiful day. Can't ask for more than this. This is our first. We had a bite once before but we lost it. We'll see what we got this time. It's big, is it? Yeah. It's big, is it? <laughs> Can you lock it anymore? That's full lock. <laughs> it's gonna take your whole reel. Oh, it stopped. Let it tire itself out. We'll just drag it until it's tired. Still pulling. And he's got it as locked as he can get it. Oh. Huh. Well, there it goes again. <laughs> We're going to lose our entire spool if it doesn't stop coming out. And we have our spinnaker up, so we can't exactly slow down. All right. It's time to try and reel this in. I don't know if, you, if you're gonna need us to uh, drop the spinnaker. Well, we might have to take shifts though. It's gonna be a struggle. Oh. 
It's a mahi mahi. Just, oh, there's a freaking shark right something. here. It's like a big massive lure. Okay. Finally. Now we're gonna weigh it. 16 kilos. 16 kilos. 36 pounds. 36 pounds. Okay, as you saw, Sean's back there with the fish. We had to fight that thing for what, 15, 20 minutes? Felt like. Yeah, it was, it was one hell of a workout. We weighed it and it's, it's a Dorado, 36 pounds or 16 kilos. Fought like hell. It's gonna be good eats though. Looking forward to that. Here we go, our mahi mahi on the grill. We've already had one that we did a little trial run with. It tasted amazing. And now we're doing all the rest. Good job, Sean. Yep. Beautiful night. Is it already done? No, it just started. Oh yeah, check out that sunset. What a day. You met our newest crew member. Uh, we're about to cross the equator, which is gonna be a memorable event. And we caught our first fish, a mahi-mahi that we're grilling up back there. Pretty eventful day, all things considered. We don't usually have this many things happening in one day. So look forward to our equator crossing next, and uh, we're gonna go have uh, an amazing dinner. Fresh cut, mahi mahi. Okay, it is July 6th and we have just crossed the equator for the first time. Yay! Woo! So Valentin's the only guy who's done this before. So, uh, well, cheers. 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 Too, guys, you've just done cheers. it. Congratulations. And uh, we have a coin from our previous port. We're gonna flip into the ocean to give something back to Neptune. And uh, is there anything you wanna say being the guy that's Initiating it to the show well, back? Well, the, 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 the old Neptune was just be good to us. And, uh, and great. Good. Yeah, and we've had a lot of time with Neptune yeah, as well. Yeah, but every time we gave him something. Like, he every time. Different, so. so even if you've done it many times, you just always give something oh, yeah, across yeah, yeah. the equator? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, we flip it into the ocean. Three, two, one. There we go. That is a uh, momentous occasion for three of us. And uh, now when my wife and I go across, I can initiate her. I'm going to be rougher on her than Valentin has been to us. In a way, it's good Steve wasn't here because he would have hazed us something fierce. <laughs> okay, in case you're wondering why we didn't stop the boat, you know, supposedly skinny dip around the boat, do all sorts of crazy stuff, it's because we're about to go into the doldrums and we're taking advantage of this last bit of wind. We didn't even bother trying to take this spinnaker or the parasailer down. So uh, because of that, we got off easy. All we did was throw coins, drink, pour a little booze in the ocean for Neptune. So I got off quite easy. Janice, just so you know, when we cross in our own boat, I'm gonna haze you way, way worse than this. So be prepared. Okay, it's the end of July 7th. We've had a beautiful day again. One thing I wanted to show you, other than there's a really interesting sunset happening, is uh, we've actually gotten our parasailer to work at 78 degrees angle to the wind. That's right, we're going on a broad reach or a, a beam reach with a parasailer. Let me turn it around. So you can see it's way off to one side. I didn't think you could do that with this spinnaker, but we've managed to do it. And it seems to be working and we're sailing it over seven knots. And then end of the day, I thought you'd check out this. It's not the sunset like down to the water, but whenever you get the sun going through clouds, it's always interesting and unique. But uh, we're very, very close to the doldrum. So as you can see when I pan around, there's no white caps. There's no big waves, there's no swells, but we are in a north current and that's the best part about being so close to Brazil. We're really close. I think we're like 100 miles off the coast. Uh, we are stuck in like a river that's going north. So even though in these conditions and even with this probably less than optimal angle for the uh, parasailer, we're still doing seven knots GPS speed average. So can't complain about that. So we are Starting to head more north now than west as we go up the Brazilian coastline and uh, yeah, we'll be in Gr to Grenada in no time if we follow this current, so that's awesome. And it's getting cooler, which is nice.
Hello, welcome to a morning vlog on July 9th. Uh, we've been sailing since Fernando Nor Nor Norona uh, for about, <clears throat> I don't know, five days, six days after a while. It becomes like Groundhog Day. Every day feels like the same. We've had sunny with cloudy periods running a parasailer or a spinnaker uh, downwind with a current behind us for days, days and days. So after a while, I just like, nothing new to film. It's the same as yesterday. So, but today, a lot of things have changed. Let me uh, talk about them and then I'll show you the uh, Davionic over the chart uh, and we'll visually be able to see it. So first, we finally gotten into the doldrums. Last night when I was finishing my, my 9 p.m. shift, we were sailing along at almost eight knots or at least eight knots at times with that two, two knot current pushing us and we had the sailor up. I thought, yeah, we'll be able to sail right through the night. Well, around 1 a.m., uh, I heard the engine come on, the sails obviously were down and we're now motoring because we're in the ITCZ, Intertropical Conversion Zone. Um, or the doldrums and a couple of things have changed as well. We've crossed the Amazon Delta. Let me show you the, the map. So this is the Amazon Delta and because of that you get this weird cross current eddy system so we no longer have a current pushing us and we get these weird um, swells even though there's almost no wind we get these pretty big swells pushing the boat around from the east coming out of, out of that direction over there. Oh, and by the way, we have a friend. This bird has been using us as a home base for a while. You can see the poop all over this chair. He takes off, goes and does his fishing, comes back and uses the same chair over and over again. So that's kind of funny. Um, the other thing is now that we're in this delta here, we're getting a lot of shipping traffic. Let me zoom in here. As you can see, the uh, these little green things are uh, AIS contacts, they're freighters. Those two pass to our port quite a distance out, um, seven, eight miles away from us, maybe more. Um, this one though is a little more concerning. This one's coming directly at us. I'm the only one awake right now, so I have to keep my eye on that. We are forecast to cross paths about two miles apart, but if he veers to his port or I veer to my port or vice versa, it could be a lot closer than that, so I have to make sure we're on the same page. Now, from what I've heard, um, the captains around Brazil don't often speak English, so we shall see. Now, a big freighter might be different, um, but normal smaller fishing boats you try and call them on the radio and they just they don't answer either They don't have the radio turned on or because you're speaking English. They don't know what you're saying So they just ignore you um, So yeah makes uh, your watches interesting when you see ships coming and uh, don't know if they're going to respond So what I'll try and do if I see us getting a little closer I'll veer to my starboard Hopefully he'll see that and veer to his starboard a bit so we can give ourselves a little bit more clearance than a little under two miles That's a little close in the middle of the ocean. So that's that. Oh, in case you want to see the info screen of what you get with the uh, AIS, so that's the name of the boat. I've already targeted him so it stays on the screen, his name and his speed and his heading and all that stuff. But if I go like this, AIS information, there you go. So his name is Pro Procyon or Procyon Leader. Uh, his draft is 27.6 feet. He's bearing, uh, he's 11.9 nautical miles away. He's bearing 293 degrees. And where does it say his dimensions? He's 180 meters long by 32 meters wide. So he's a big, big boat. And if we go to the second page, you'll see our nearest approach is somewhere between 2.4 and 3 nautical miles, uh, which is pretty close <laughs> when you get one of these big boats that, that feels a little closer than I would like it to be. But uh, he seems to be on a constant heading and hasn't moved, so I will definitely move out of his way. Procyon Leader, Procyon Leader, Procyon Leader. This is Sailing Vessel Firefly. Sailing Vessel Firefly. Over. Yeah, I'm just going to call him and see, make sure we're going port to port. Are we coming closer? I, mean, I, I veered a little to the Leader, is Firefly over. Firefly, I just want to confirm we're going to pass port to port. Is that correct? Yeah, this is Procyon Leader. I'm keeping you on my port side. 10 4, thank you very much. Have a good morning. Over. So that was fun, being the only one that was awake, uh, calling a big vessel like that on the uh, VHF just to confirm. We have both agreed we're passing port to port. I just didn't want him to veer to a new course at the last minute and then I'm all panicking to get out of his way. Uh, you know, big, biggest boat wins, so I definitely want to make sure I'm out of his way. Obviously, I fell back on my police uh, lingo a little bit. When instead of saying copy, I said 10-4, but uh, I'm sure he knew what I meant. He, he could tell he could speak English very, very well. So, so there's our friendly neighborhood freighter going by. Valentin heard me talking on the radio and woke up. He sleeps right behind the helm station. Um, and uh, we're just curious. He thinks that's a car carrier. The way it's shaped, it's all hull and nothing, not much on top. So he thinks the back of it opens up and the cars just drive on. Probably new cars from factories and then they get shipped to wherever they're going. So 
Fair winds and following seas, although I guess you don't need the winds. We definitely have our current back because we have not changed our RPMs of our engine. A little while ago, maybe a couple hours ago, we were doing maybe six knots, which told me we were not getting a current assist. And now, check this out. This is our actual GPS speed. Haven't changed the RPM, which is about almost 1900, but we're doing eight over eight knots. So there you go. And actually on here, if you look at this, you'll see an orange arrow pop in front of the boat every once in a while. And that's sort of its calculation of what it thinks the current is. So there it is, orange arrow in front of the boat, pops up every once in a while. So yeah, nice to get at least eight and a half knots of speed on really an idling engine. 1900 is not very high. We've definitely motored it. Well, when we were first breaking in this diesel engine, we were motoring at like 2600, 2800 at some time. So 1800 is just sipping gas, so. Okay, got my fan set up. This is the shower in my cabin. This is the way uh, Exquisite sets it up. They actually have the cabin in, sorry, the shower in your cabin, which is, uh, it's got its pros and cons, I guess. But uh, one thing I want to say is if you're going to get a boat, two things that are absolutely a must to me, A, an autopilot that is bulletproof, because you never want to have to hand steer for hours and hours and hours and hours trying to get long, uh, through a long passage. So that's A, I can't, that's the number one thing. B, get a really good water maker, <laughs> because when it's stinking hot like this, even a two minute quick, like cold, I mean, I had it set all the way to the coldest setting and do that for a couple minutes and your whole core temperature's down. Now, if you don't have a water maker, you're never gonna be able to do that because you're never gonna just flush water down the drain by having a shower all the time just to cool off. But luckily this boat has an amazing water maker and uh, because of that, whenever we're really hot, just jump in your shower, cool off. It's amazing. Now I'm gonna lay in front of the fan and try and not melt. Maybe we know how I said earlier in an earlier vlog that we didn't get any of that brown water from the Amazon Delta. We just see this thing going right across in front of us now. It's like white froth. It's crossing in front of the entire going. Look at, way, look at way off from a distance. Oh yeah. So what do you know? This could be some sort of weird current from the Amazon River. I'm gonna go in the bow in case there's anything floating in it. Seaweed and froth. It's definitely a current coming straight out here. You can see it, like all the white froth all the way out and then on the other side all the way out. Huh, there we go. The infamous Amazon crap current. Luckily, uh, no logs, no logs. <laughs> That's a good thing. I guess we finally did get to the brown water. It's quite, a, quite far north from the Amazon Delta, but I guess since the current is going north, there it is. No longer blue and clear and transparent, but more of like black water. So, uh, but we are still like a hundred and something miles off the coast, so we're not going to get any logs or anything like that, I doubt. But uh, it is a true phenomenon. The Amazon is constantly blowing silt out into the ocean, and uh, this is what happens. And we're just about to have a beautiful sunset, although there's a storm <laughs> going to block our beautiful sunset any minute now. You're going to want to join us in the next episode when we continue to motor through the doldrums, but we find that we're visited by dolphins two and three times a day. It's pretty cool. And then after we finally get out of the doldrums, we get back to sailing on our way to Grenada. And that's where I have to fly home because I've run out of time. Got to get back to my real life. So this next episode should be the last episode of this long, long 6,000 plus nautical mile voyage before the next episode after that, which will be our usual yearly pilgrimage to the Annapolis Sailboat Show, where Janice will be back in the episodes for those who forgot what she looked like. Yep, those episodes are always very, very popular. Everybody wants to know what's going on at the show, what different catamarans are there. So stay tuned for that. If you found this episode enjoyable or informative, please show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those future episodes. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising and ciao for now. We anchor and hoist ourselves.